Greetings from the garden. My name is Ben and welcome back to a brand new season of Let's Grow Stuff. Well, we're kicking off this season by learning how to start our own plants from seed indoors. So let's jump in and get started. Well, it's a new season and you may notice a few new things. First, I have hair. Second, because we're getting a jump start on the season, we're filming things indoors. Welcome to my basement. So why do we start things early and from seed? Well, some things just need a jump start on the season because they take longer to mature. And consulting your seed packet is the best way to know what you can start early versus what can just be planted outdoors. Generally speaking, tomatoes, peppers, eggplant, cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, and okra all do best when started early. Before we actually get to planting our seeds, let's think about whether starting seeds indoors is the best option for us. Let's talk benefits. When starting from seed, you just have more options for plant varieties. You can grow some really interesting things like heirloom tomatoes which you can't find at most garden centers. You'll likely save money compared with buying transplants as a single packet of seeds, which costs just a few dollars, can yield dozens of plants and you get to experience the pure, wonderful joy of nurturing your own plants from the very beginning of the season. Next, let's go over some other things that you'll need to keep in mind. Seedlings need daily TLC, even if it's just a quick five minute inspection. If this daily attention will be a challenge with your schedule, starting seeds may not be the best option for you. Seedlings need bright, direct sunlight. A south facing window is perfect, but if you have an east or west facing window, that'll work too. If your only window faces north, you may need to purchase an electric grow light. Think about how many plants you need. If you're growing in limited space in, say, a container, then buying plants from a garden center may simply be an easier choice for you. So once you've considered these points, if starting your own seeds indoors feels like the right option for you, here's how to get started. And before we dig out the soil or pots, we're actually going to begin with a calendar. Do a quick online search to find your frost-free date. If you're growing in the Midwest, this is likely mid to late May. Once you know this date, we'll start working backwards to know when to sow our seeds. Most seed packets have instructions about when and how to sow your seeds, and we'll use phrases like, start indoors six weeks before last frost. It's pretty straightforward, but use this information to make a list of everything you're growing, and that will help you know when to plant. Well, now that you know when to start your seeds, here are the basic supplies you'll need. Potting soil. Look on the package and make sure it says that it's rated for seed starting or transplants. Containers or flats for sowing. You can either purchase new cell packs or recycle and reuse common household items like egg cartons or salad boxes. If you're reusing something like an egg carton, make sure it has a small drainage hole in the bottom. Depending on your material, a pencil, hole punch, or X-Acto knife work great for this. A waterproof tray to sit underneath your pots. This will help with watering and with moving your plants. You can use household items like baking sheets for your trays, but just remember they'll be out of commission for a few weeks. You can also check out thrift stores for some of these materials, but make sure they're clean before you begin. Before we add soil to our pots, we need to make sure it's slightly moist first. If your soil needs more moisture, add water a few cups at a time and mix it together until the consistency is just right. And this is where the soil will hold together in our hands but doesn't drip excess water when we squeeze it. Now that our soil is prepared, fill your containers by dumping a cup or two of soil into the tray at a time and smoothing it over until all spaces are filled. Do not push or pack it down. Here's a quick tip. Do this over a large piece of cardboard or some newspaper so that it's easy to recapture excess soil. And make sure to label your trays so that you know what variety is growing where. Popsicle sticks work great for this and writing your labels before you start planting can be helpful too. All right, we're nearly there. It's time to plant our seeds. Consult your seed packet to know how deep to plant each type of seed. Make a line with a marker on a pencil to help you make consistent holes. Create a small depression in the center of each container cell. Add two to three seeds per hole. We do this to increase our chances that every container cell will have a viable transplant. Gently cover each hole with a little extra soil and smooth over the top. All three seeds may grow and that's okay. We'll cover what to do about that in the next episode. Place your seed tray in a warm, sunny location. 
but make sure it's not on top of a heat vent or a radiator because that could dry them out too quickly. Since our soil is already moist, we shouldn't need to add any additional water at this point. But let's talk about watering. As your soil dries out, it's best to water from below by adding about a cup of water to your tray. The pots will wick up the water through the drainage hole in each cell. Wait for all water in the tray to wick up before you add more. Standing water is an indication that your soil is too wet. If you're using city water, make sure to either filter it or let it sit on the counter in an open container for at least 24 hours. This allows chemicals like fluoride and chlorine to evaporate because these chemicals can harm our baby plants. Well now, we wait. And patience is key. Most seeds should germinate within about 7 to 14 days. As your plants emerge and begin to grow, you'll notice them reaching for the light, and you'll be shocked by how quickly they move. Turn your tray 180 degrees every one to two days, and this will help the stems grow strong and straight. Well, there you have it. You've started your first plants from seed. Congratulations. Now, we'll cover what to do as your plants begin to grow in the next episode, but in the meantime, stay tuned to the Let's Grow Stuff blog and website for more tips and tricks. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Funding for Let's Grow Stuff is provided by Willie Street Co-op, Focus Fund for Wisconsin Programming, and Friends of PBS Wisconsin.